the show that bridges the gap between faith and business. Welcome to Bottom Line Faith. Today's show features Brad Huff, president of Mr. Quick Home Services. You know, I remember kind of the, um, the deepest, darkest moment of that for me. I'm like, God, where are you? C.S. Lewis says, uh, you know, sometimes I, I go to the door that God's inside of and I knock and sometimes I just wonder, why is no one answering? And that's truly what I felt like, God, why are you not answering? Well, hello, everyone. This is Ray Hilbert. I am your host here at Bottom Line Faith. And this is the program. If you've been a regular listener, you know that this is where we get the opportunity to travel the country, and we talk with some of America's most amazing Christ followers who have started businesses, running companies and organizations. And uh, kind of the analogy we like to use here at Bottom Line Faith is this is the program where we lift the hood and we tinker around in the engine of Christian leadership in the marketplace. So we would like to welcome you to the show. Well, I got to tell you, gang, I am really excited to uh, be uh, bringing today's program to you for a couple of reasons. One reason is uh, a lot of times we're out on the road from coast to coast. We go out and interview guests, but um, have the fortune today to actually be seated in my hometown of Indianapolis, Indiana. And we have the pleasure today of introducing to you an amazing Christ follower who loves Jesus a whole bunch and is running an amazing company. His name is Brad Huff, and Brad is the president of Mr. Quick Home Services, serving homes and families throughout central Indiana. Brad, welcome to Bottom Line Faith. Yes, thanks, Ray. I appreciate you for uh, for having me on. Well, I tell you what, Brad, I'm looking forward to our conversation because you and I have had, you know, we've had breakfast and lunch and gotten to know each other a little bit. And every time I've had time with you, I've just walked away just encouraged. You are an encourager of people, and I know you are very serious about living out your faith, not only at home, but certainly in and through your business. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. It's... um. Yeah, it is serious to me. It's uh, something I think um, God wants us to do. I think it's something we're called to do. I, um, you know, I don't, I don't see a, a breakdown anywhere from the scriptures that says, "Hey, we need to live this way at home, this way at work." You know, I just, I kind of blend them in all into one, and really try my best. I don't succeed at all times, but uh, my best to follow Christ and and live as He would want us to live in in every situation. Absolutely, and so. Uh, we're going to get into learning more about your company and your business and your background and your career and so forth in just a few moments. But why don't you take just a couple of moments and just kind of help us understand how it is that you came to be a follower of Christ, you know, tell us a little bit about your childhood and upbringing, but how did you become a, a, a Christian? Yeah, so um, I was raised in a small farm town southwest uh, of Indianapolis called Monrovia. Um, you know, worked, did farm jobs growing up and... Um, it wasn't raised in a Christian home, um, but at the same time was raised uh, very, I'll say, uh, by Christian principles, even though I may have not been directly in a Christian home at church on weekends. But uh, I, I, I lived my own, the way I wanted to live um, up until I was about 24 years old. And when I was 24, my best friend died in, a, in an auto accident. And at that time, I think most 24-year-olds, you're invincible. You don't think about death. You don't think about this life ending. And so that woke me up and, and really set me on a journey to um, just searching, like what is, and really my ultimate question was, what is truth? Like what, what is the, where's the truth in, in the afterlife? And, and uh, there's all these different belief systems, all these different worldviews. And so I, I went down a path of reading some that I dismissed very quickly, others that you know, I dabbled in a little more, and then um, a few authors really, really uh, impacted me, and uh, C.S. Lewis being one, Dr. Ravi Zacharias being another, and uh, Lee Strobel through his book, Case for Christ. And those three authors uh, really led me down a path of um, looking at Christianity and, and looking at it as, hey, this is real. Um, Christ did come here as God incarnate. God, he did die, and He did raise on the third day physically. And uh, he's given me a chance to to accept him and, and to live that life. And so when I was about 24, 25 years old is when that happened. And um, I uh, started down a new path at that point. And, and the rest is history, I guess. 
that's really interesting to me in that you you that really was kind of a really bad thing that caused something really great to happen, right? And I, we hear that a lot. You know, people ask, well, why does God allow bad things to happen? But in this case, it's an example of how something that was apparently bad led you ultimately to find your Savior. Yeah, absolutely. And it's um, it's something this particular friend of mine and, and myself uh, talked about, you know, never uh, expected it to, to come fruition that early for him. But it was a um, it was a bad time in my life. It was a tough time in my life. But uh, as as Lewis says, you know, God whispers to us in our our pleasures and and shouts to us in our pains. So it was a, a wake up call, and it was something that definitely led me to the truth, to Him, and down the right path, and and ultimately led um, to to something good. Even though at the time it was very painful. Uh, I, I appreciate you giving us that background and just giving us some context of what what ended up uh, being. P- big part of your faith journey. So so let's talk then a little bit about uh, Mr. Quick Home Services. Uh, what is it that your business does? And kind of give us a, a picture of the scope and realm of, of the business. Yeah, so Mr. Quick Home Services is a, is a home service pr- provider. Uh, we do heating, cooling, electrical, and plumbing repair work um, for homeowners around the central Indiana area. So, um, you know, a customer may have a drain that's not working or may have a a heater that's not working or an air conditioner that's not working. They give us a call. We send a technician out and he he gets them going, gets them fixed. And and that's what we do each and every day. Not real, um, not real interesting, pretty, uh, pretty run of the mill kind of boring stuff, but uh, we try our best to, to make it fun and to, um, to serve customers in a, a really as, as good a manner as we possibly can. And so um, when when was the business started? Did you start the company? Did you buy the company? Help us understand the, the early days. Yeah, so I, um, I wasn't much of a student in high school or college. So I um, throughout high school, I always had summer jobs, nights, weekends, and uh, worked as an electrician for a family friend. So did that uh, from about my sophomore, sophomore, junior, senior years. And by the time I was a senior, I kind of had a good idea of what I was doing on the electrical side. I decided to give college a try and made it almost a semester. And <laughs> okay, yeah, right. yeah, decided uh, that wasn't for me. So I left that and uh, called the family friend up and said, hey, are, are you still doing the electrical work? And he was. And so he and I went to work for another company for a year. And then um, we decided we were going to go back out and start our own business and we did that, uh, started our own business and started doing electrical work again in, um, in June of 2000. And um, we did that uh, for about three years. He had some medical issues. And so um, he had to leave the business. And so there I was, 23 years old. We, we had a business with about 20 employees. And I was left uh, with the keys to this, this business that I had no idea what I was doing. So had to figure it out very quickly because I had no other options. Well, it, what what's uh, kind of an interesting thought about that whole journey was it doesn't sound like you had formal business training. You were a practitioner. You were an electrician, right? So what gave you the confidence to think you could pull that off? Yeah, it uh, maybe it wasn't confidence. It may have been stupidity, I think. <laughs> I, you know, it, it wasn't something um, I was ready for. It wasn't something. Looking back now, like, I, I, I think, man, I, I really had – it was pure ignorance. Like, I really had no idea what what I was doing. I had no idea what really anything meant, what numbers meant, had no idea how to manage. I had no idea how to do accounting, had no idea how to run anything, but there I was with it. And so really it was, um, you know, I've heard people talk about um, no option options um, to where, you know, if you want something really bad, uh, just give yourself a no option option. So I did have drive. I, I've always been a motivated individual and, and kind of motivated um I don't think I'm motivated. I'm just motivated to be the best I can be. And so that's where I was at at the time. And and I didn't have any other options. So this was my livelihood at stake. And so I had no option but to make this thing work. So made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes and um, learned a lot of what not to do in just about every realm of business. And you just, you know, kind of go through the maze and, mm-hmm. you know, you figure it out and get better each day. And that was kind of the name of the game each day, just get a little better than you were the previous day. I had a lot of um, mentors that I had worked with. I reached out to a lot of people. That was one thing I, I um, was never afraid to do was to reach out to people who I knew who were having business success and would just reach out to them and say, hey, will you help? 
and you know, not all would, but the ones who would, I, I still um, think about to this day and I'm very thankful that they were willing to help. Appreciate that. And recently, um, we had a chance uh, here at Bottom Line Faith to interview David Green, who's the founder and CEO of Hobby Lobby. And one of the comments that he shared in our interview with him was there there are times when he feels very nostalgic about those early days. How about for you? Do you ever have any nostalgic feelings for those early days, or are you just like really glad they're past you now? I, th- I think it's both and. Okay. Um, e- each, my experience is each kind of level of business, each level of business success has its own challenges. And um, and I remember uh, Zig Ziglar saying one time, money's not everything, but it rates reasonably close to oxygen. And so having the money to, I mean, back then there was literally, you know, payrolls Friday and Thursday morning I come into the office and there's nothing. There's no money. There's no line of credit. There's no investors. There's nothing. And so you have to figure out today how you're going to make payroll tomorrow. And that's a different kind of stress than, than uh, some of the stresses you get as you get a little bit bigger and a little bit more successful. So I will say, you know, maybe some of the hunger, it's, it's a little bit easier to get when you have nothing and you have to make this work versus, okay, we have a little something and, um, you know, we don't have to be um, so now, now, now about it. We have a little bit of breathing room here. So I think that's some of what I miss is, is the hunger, you know, that, uh, Hey, this has to happen today. I'm a very impatient person. So mm-hmm. just naturally mm-hmm. that stuff just kind of came, but, um, each level I have found kind of presents different challenges. Well, let's, let's just kind of stay parked here just for a moment. Right. And, uh, in this whole vein of startups and new ideas and not knowing what we're doing, all those things, Right. What would you say to, to someone who's listening to this conversation right now, and and maybe they've got a, an idea that they want to start a new business or maybe split off, start a new product line if they've got a business, whatever the case may be, what, what advice or what words of encouragement would you have for that person who's kind of feeling like what you just described, saying, I've got nothing, I really don't know what to do? What would you say to them? I think starting... I think is the biggest key. Um, so whether that means, you know, you're in a, you're in a job now and you want to start your own business, um, start it, start it. I'm not suggesting you quit your other job, right. but you have nights, you have weekends. So get after it and start. I think uh, I'd read a book early on. I think it was called action trumps everything. And, uh, it was a study professor at Harvard and he did a study on entrepreneurs and he talked about how some individuals are planners. They want every I dotted, every T crossed before they'll start I'm kind of of the exact opposite uh, nature where I get an idea and I just start. But you fail quicker, you learn quicker from my experience, and I think you just get to that end goal, even though it may not be what you originally intended. I think you do get to that end goal a little bit quicker if you just start, get going. Yeah, you're you're never going to... I mean, if we asked uh, Tim Cook of Apple today, hey, do you have it all figured out? No, I don't. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it each and every day and I'm doing the best I can. So, um, I'm speaking a little bit for him there, but I, I think, uh, I, that's how I feel a lot of times, but you just, you, you just start, you just go, you do the best you can and, and just fall forward and fail fast. So if I've been tracking you, you know, I'm just kind of hitting the rewind button here back to the early days. You were fairly new in the business, fairly young company, had a partner that had medical issues, I'm assuming may have prevented full participation in certain aspects of the business, correct? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And 20-some employees thereabout. Yes. And if I followed, somewhere in that time frame is when you came to be a follower of Christ. It was in that, um, it was in that time frame, yes. We, uh, I, I don't have the Paul conversion story. I don't have this right. one moment right. where I just woke up and I said, I'm a follower of Christ. For me, it was, it was uh, over a period of months, maybe even years, and I slowly came to that point. But it was in that general time frame, yes. Yeah. And I know this from earlier conversations that you have had you and I have had over sharing a meal. You genuinely view your company, Mr. Quick Home Services, as a platform for Christian ministry to to share your faith and to be a ministry. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I, I used used to be when I early days of business, my goal was to kind of, you know, hey, I want to get I want to get this business built up to the point where I can go and do full-time ministry. And then uh, one day, just through prayer, uh, God, he told me, he said, hey, 
um, this is your ministry. Get to work. There's people there who need to hear my message and will never hear it if you don't share it with them. I really appreciate you sharing that because so often we <laughs> we can buy into the lie that ministry's out there somewhere instead of really prayerfully contemplating and considering the people and the platform that God's already given us. And this, for those of us who are in business, it's right here. Yes. It's customers, it's employees, it's vendors. In some cases, it's it's competitors even, right? Because we have a chance to mingle with them in the marketplace. So let's talk a little bit about that. Give us maybe a best practice or two, a specific way that you really try to intentionally model and live out your Christian faith in and through your business. What's that look like? You know, it, it may look a little bit different every day, but you know, we're in the retail industry where uh, we're dealing with directly with consumers. So the goal is to make every customer happy. We don't always succeed in doing that, but just in treating them, trying trying to go the fifty one percent, just trying to go above and beyond. Even when, you know, the whole the notion that the customer is always right. I, I think I don't think we believe that. But right, right. you can still you can react to the situation or you can respond to the situation, and we just try to choose to respond and and walk away in a manner that um, you know three years down the road we we look back and feel good on how how we handled that situation. Yeah, and so <laughs> being in the in the retail and and you know, the business of serving homeowners consumers, right? I've got to believe there are times when. Uh, they post things on social media, you know, reviews, make negative comments about your business and about your company. I would assume sometimes they've had a bad experience because you're human beings and your team as well. But how have you handled the times when those have just been unfair and untrue criticisms? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I think the more you experience it, the better you kind of get at it. But early on, you, I would respond defensively. I would want to, hey, let's talk to this person, uh, do all of those things. And I think just over time, you know, there, there's going to be a certain percentage of people who it doesn't matter what you do, they're just going to be upset. And there's a certain percentage of people who are just going to take advantage of you. Uh, in our company, we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if a customer's not happy for any reason, we will refund their money. And you get that. You get some that are unjust, but we're the ones that said it, so we give them their money back. But the uh, the online reviews, that's tough. That's a tough thing. And and I think you just do them on a case-by-case situation. I also think we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in going all in on, on my strengths and not really worrying about my weaknesses. So when once we got to a certain level and I could afford to get the right person to respond to those, I have a full-time person now who that's a big part of her job on a daily basis is, is handling those and communicating with those customers and doing whatever it takes to make them happy. And it's just something in today's with technology and social media, it's just it's the Wild West, right? We just can't control those things, and sometimes it's just going to happen. I, I get that. So, Brad, let's let, let, let me just kind of review back up 18 years in business. Yep. Congratulations, Thank first you. of all. That's fantastic. Take us to the darkest time. Take us to the hardest moment of business ownership. What was it? What were you going through? How did your faith impact how you handled that? I, I'm just, I want to hear about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had, we grew very, very rapidly, and, and growth uh, can be a good thing. It can also be a very challenging thing. Especially for cash flow. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we struggled... Um, you know, we put some people in place, um, some managements in place that maybe they weren't in the right roles in the in the company, and they caused us some they caused us some problems, and that led to some lawsuits against our company. And it was about a, a two year ordeal. And I don't, you know, was the company at risk? Was it that serious? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. It was a uh, it was a real tough time to go through, and it was. I won't say it was 100% unjust. Mm -hmm. There was some justice to it. There were some things we were doing wrong and and, uh, maybe not communicating properly and things of that nature. But the biggest piece of it was unjust. And then the media picked it up, which that's a whole nother story. We could do a whole nother podcast on that one. But the uh, the media picks it up and, and what they were reporting wasn't accurate. And then you get competitors jumping on board. And then you get the online stuff, which you just referenced a few minutes ago. And it really just spiraled out of control. And uh, we dealt with that for, for a couple of years. And, you know, I remember kind of the... Um, I would say the the deepest, darkest moment of that for me. And I, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday and, and I was just, I was with my wife and just the flood of emotions just comes out and you just really, I, I just, I'm like, God, where are you? 
what, why, you know, and, and Lewis again, C.S. Lewis is, he spoke to me, his writings really spoke to me during this time. And he's in one of his books. He's, he's got the conversation where he says, uh, you know, sometimes I, I go to the door and that, that God's inside of, and I knock and sometimes I just wonder why is no one answering? And that's truly what I felt like, God, why are you not answering? And, um, so we went through that and I, and I remember that like it was yesterday. And, and that was kind of the, the climax of that. And, you know, you, there's no immediate answers, but you just, um, you wake up, you, you get back on your knees. And that's really where I spent most of that time was on my knees in prayer and, and with God. And, you know, I, I just worked through it the best I can through prayer and, and God slowly revealed himself uh, to me through that. And again, much like my friend's death, looking back on that, we're now five, six years removed from that. We're in such a better place, both from uh, how we operate to from how we serve our customers, to how we serve our team members, to for all those things. It's it's just been phenomenal to watch that uh, success kind of turn around. And, you know, and kind of at the lowest moment of that, um, you know, I, I've uh, over the years through prayer and, and, and really tried to learn how to hear and listen to God more. And I'll never forget, I was, I was praying one morning and, and uh, God tells me a scripture to, to go to, which I'd never experienced before in my life, and I wasn't familiar with the scripture. So I go to the scripture, and it's, uh, it's about Elisha when he's, uh, he's at a city and the well's bad, and, and he tells him to go get some salt, and he throws salt in the well, and he says, God says the well's good and it's clean and it'll be good forever now. And I really do believe God sent me to that scripture, and I think that was him telling me, the well is good move forward, you're fine now. And I, I really hold on to that scripture, and it's something that means a lot to me. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, I, you know, isn't it amazing how sometimes, I, I, just those promptings, right? You know, the Holy Spirit speaking to us, but I love the fact you obeyed, you went, and He had a special word just for you that day. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, something I've really tried to get better at. Someone told me one time, they said, uh, you know, we, we all have those, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, voices in our heads, right? We, we talk to ourselves. Right. and. He, he told me, he said, most of the time we think that's us, but it could be God. And he said, why don't you try flipping that and think that's God, but it could be you. Very good. Very good. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, So we kind of talked about that lowest point and so forth. We've learned a little bit about when you be, first began to see your business as a ministry and a mission field. As you look back over the course of your career and your, your pathway, what's the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you? Who was it? And how does it impact you yet today? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think um, you know, just quickly thinking about this, I uh, I've always, as I alluded to earlier, kind of always sought out mentors. And um, there's a there's been a God ordained mentor in my life that if the story of how we met is quite clear that God meant him to come into my life. But he he had uh, told me one time he's he said you know just whatever you do whatever you do. He said, just do it with God. Just do it with God and don't worry about the results. Just do it with God. And and that's um, that's been very impactful to me. It's helped me to have an eternal, more of an eternal viewpoint on things versus a temporal viewpoint on things. So I may do things in my business that look crazy to outsiders or even to myself, but if I'm doing it with God, I think I'm doing it for the right reasons and, and having that eternal perspective on it. Absolutely. And so how is your faith tested in business? How Are there times when it's maybe you're tempted or times when you're uncertain about God, what God would have you do? What, what's that like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, temptations come in every shape or absolutely. size, right? They, yeah, and absolutely. They, I think when we think they're not coming is probably when we're, when we're most vulnerable for them. And I, I think the more success, the more business success we have, maybe the more susceptible we are to some of those temptations. And I think for myself, I think I can tend to think, look what I've done. Right. And so now I've already just disconnected from what I just said. I'm no longer doing these things with God. I'm now putting them and patting myself on the back, looking at my own uh, greatness and it's no, no, if, I can do this without you, Brad. I don't need you. So <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, the temptations do come and, and you just, I think you surround yourself with the right people, start your morning on your knees, get plugged in, connected to God, and just do the best you can to protect yourself from those things. Fantastic. Well, folks, one more time, we are speaking with Brad Huff, the president of Mr. Quick Home Services. You can learn more about Brad and his company at Mr. Quick Home Services. 
dot com. Brad, it always amazes me just how how quickly the time goes. So really, we we just have time for a, a couple of more questions. So what I'd like to ask you is. Um, Looking back, what advice would you give to the twenty-year-old you? You know, what would you say to Brad at age twenty? Yeah, I think um, as I, I, I've, I think I said earlier, I'm an extremely impatient person, and I've gained patience as I've as I've aged. But um, I mean, when I was younger, I was extremely impatient. Everything had to be now, and so I think the first thing would be, hey, be patient. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. So be patient with it. I would probably encourage myself because I was so I was so focused on bu- building the business. I think there was a lot of other things that uh, maybe got hurt. Some of the relationships in my life, some family, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I, I I wish wish I could have spent more time with some of the family and friends doing some of that stuff, and um, probably just just learning learning to listen and hear hear God more, more clearly. Um, you know, Jesus says uh, uh, to listen to him, but he also says to act. So to hear and to act. And so if you do hear, act on what you heard and and just uh, have patience in doing it. This thing isn't going to happen. It's not going to come to fruition overnight. Yeah, absolutely. That's correct. And, and so, you know, as you kind of now look at this stage in your life, what do you what do you think is maybe that really big vision or what's left undone that God's calling you to? That's an interesting question. I I, I love business. I love uh, being able to just uh, pour into our team members' lives, our our customers' lives. I love being able to to serve those in need who can't afford our service. I love those things. Um, I I think God's called me. To continue on in business, to to do some other things, there are other businesses we've looked at into expanding into or purchasing other mm-hmm. businesses, things of that nature. But at this, you, you got to be careful with that too. You can't uh, you can't do too many things at once. So I'm still honestly noodling through some of that. Yeah, um, sure. I have gotten That's fair as the business has grown and become more successful. It has given me more time to do some. Uh, some I'll call it mission work. Mm-hmm. We did a pastors conference in Africa last year. We've got a few of those uh, we're doing in different parts of the country this year, or different parts of the world. And I I don't think I think a lot of times we think we need to travel around the world to do these things, right. but uh, I don't think that's the case. I think there's plenty to do in our own backyard, and I think more of us need to be called to our own backyard. So, yeah, I, I'm working through some of that, but I think just continuing to serve and and see where I can can be best used is kind of where I'm at today. That's fantastic. I, I appreciate that. And that's part of the, the daily journal journey, right, that we're on, is trying to figure out day by day, Lord, what do you have for us? Well, <laughs> Brad, believe it or not, we are at the end of the program. Went fast, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, there's one question, Brad, that I always end every conversation with, and here at Bottom Line Faith, we love to call this our 423 question. So if you're a regular listener, you know what's about to happen. If not, if it's your first time, I think you're going to find this real interesting. But this question is based out of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, where Solomon writes, "...above all else, guard your heart, for it determines the course of your life." Brad, I just want to paint this picture. It's towards the tail end of your life. Of course, none of us know when that day is going to be here. But let's just pretend you can paint this picture out toward the tail end of your life, and you have a chance to gather your family, your friends, those who are most precious to you. And you're about to enter into eternity, and you have a chance to pass along one piece of advice. What would be your above all else? So finish the sentence, above all else. Above all else... Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> above all else, I think um, God, Jesus, like above all else, like it just, other things are important, yes, but above all else, just cling to him, trust him, look to him. And um, I think coming from the deathbed, I think that would be very, very impactful, but that's where you're going, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to, this is going to end someday. So I think above all else, Search for the truth, find the truth, and 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 trust in it, and and have a relationship with him, and and just get to know him and spend time with him. That's that's as good as advice as any of us can have is really just trust in the Lord, right? So I just want to say thank you for taking the time to come by and share your heart with us and your journey. Really appreciate you being a guest here at Bottom Line Faith. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. 
Well, folks, we have heard some incredible truth today and and some just encouragement from Brad Huff. He is the president at Mr. Quick Home Services. Again, one more time, you can check out their website at mrquickhomeservices.com. Folks, thank you for joining us here at Bottom Line Faith. If you're not a regular subscriber, please, please consider going to Bottom Line Faith, scrolling down to the bottom of the page there, and you can subscribe, whether it's on iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, Stitcher, any of the, the standard podcast platforms. Lots and lots of interviews there at our site, bottomlinefaith.org. Truth at Work is the host ministry here at Bottom Line Faith. If you're interested in learning about one of our roundtable groups around the country, please check us out at truthatwork.org. Until next time, I am your host here at Bottom Line Faith, Ray Hilbert, encouraging you to serve the Lord faithfully in the marketplace every day. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bottom Line Faith is brought to you by Truth at Work. If you'd like to hear about new episodes or listen to past episodes, visit us online at bottomlinefaith.org. You can also subscribe to the show through Google Play and iTunes. 